from PRX. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls and friends beyond the binary. It's time for the podcaster who's gently holding his arms. I'm cupping my elbows uh, gently. Which I'd say, if El- if Elton John cut me softly, oh, th- that's the ode of elbows. Uh, I don't think Elton John John ever sang that. How did I almost I almost mispronounced Elton John's name? Cut me softly. I'm an elbow. That's what I would sing if my elbow could sing. Because I say it's not crossing my my arms are are, are kind of crossed, but they're supporting one another. It's one of those things that keeps me. It's it is a form of self soothing when I get ready to record this, uh, so I can be here for you. If you're new, holy moly, you might already be wondering where you are. Well, here's where you are. It's time for sleep with me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. Uh, hey, before we get to the story here, uh, or the episode here, sorry about that. I just want to let you know, you know, Sleep With Me is grounded in empathy and compassion and, and the idea that you matter and you getting a good night's sleep matters. And that's kind of one of those things that's interconnected with everyone. Uh, and uh, that means that, uh, I mean, it means a couple of things to me. It means, one, providing links to resources if you're having a real tough time right now. In this moment where you could reach out for support and getting connected to resources right Right now, those are in the show notes, and it also means supporting the members of our community right now. And right now, that doesn't just mean saying Black Lives Matter; it means making Black mental health a priority in our society, uh, and saying, "Look at the, the impact of of not following through on this and not making it a priority." So, if you're in need of resources or you want to be a part of change, there's going to be links to organizations that you could reuse as a resource, or that you could offer your financial resource or more to in the show notes because you're important, all right? Uh, so, uh, that, 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 and that's why I say it. And thank, thank you for all the reminders that I say, yeah, if this show really is grounded in empathy and compassion, uh, it, it means, you know, po- pointing that out. Uh, and uh, here's a couple of ways. I mean, here, oh, yeah, this is like where I say, when your hand hits the fridge tomorrow, remember those resources that are in your show notes and that these are the sponsors that enable me to bring you the show for free twice a week. Thanks, everybody. Hey, this is Scoots. And I was just wondering if you could take a second and look back at uh, how your year with Sleep With Me went. Because 2020 has been a year, and I really hope the podcast was there for you when you needed it. How many times did you listen? How many months have you been listening for? Thanks so much. And then when I think about 2021, I'm, I'm going to be there on a regular basis, just like I was here this year for you, to put you to sleep and to keep you company. And I don't know if you're in a position, you say, wow, I really did listen to a lot of Sleep With Me in 2020, probably 100, 200 episodes. If you're in a position to do so, could you consider becoming an annual patron for 2021 or a monthly patron? It makes a huge difference. That's how I was able to be there. Uh, you know, I... There was certainty. Sleep with me was there Wednesday and Sunday night for you. And a big part of that was because I could rely on the patrons, uh, just a small percentage of listeners who are in a position and choose to be rebels with a cause. They say, I get so much out of a free podcast, I'm going to pay for it. And now people are becoming annual patrons and saying, I'm going to make it. I, mean, I know I'm going to use sleep with me for the next year. Or I know a lot of other people get a benefit out of sleep with me. So think about it. You could do it at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron. That's a sleep with me podcast podcast.com slash patron. Uh, sign up as a, a, a monthly or an annual patron. If you do an annual patronage, uh, you'll save, uh, you'll get a month for free. But think about it. I'm going to be here for 2021 either way for you. Uh, but if you're in a position to do so and you got a lot out of the show in 2020, think about being a rebel with a cause and paying for a free podcast. It's pretty rebellious and I really appreciate it. Thanks so much. Sleep with me podcast.com slash patron. All right, everybody. Ho, ho, ho. It's time for the Sleepy Supporter Zone. The holiday season is upon us, and that means that holiday shopping season that everybody's doing online. And I wanted to thank Eve, who got a head start on our holiday gifting by bl- buying two different blend jets for her besties. The blend jets make an amazing gift. If you're b- supporting a sponsor, particularly for a holiday gift, tag them, tag me. Let me know about it. Send them an email. Send me an email, and let me know. I can try to thank 
thank you on the Sporter Zone. Let me know what, what you're getting as a holiday gift. That's like most of our sponsors, they make perfect gifts. And then you're gifting the show too, because you're supporting the podcast. And then I also want to thank silent sleepy supporters. A lot of people are supporting BetterHelp and they're getting the support they need. And they've been telling me in detail about how much they've been enjoying the process. You know, I recently switched over to doing uh, remote therapy as well. And uh, it, it's really, really convenient. And it's really convenient for your mental health. So if you're using BetterHelp, you know, you could always send me an email or let me know about it. Uh, and, and I'll respect it if, if you, if you want to just keep it between us. But I really, really, really uh, respect all the listeners uh, taking that extra step and let me know about it. And if you do support BetterHelp, let them know about it. You know, send them an email or something. Uh, thanks, everybody that's doing that. And that's the end of the first part of Sleepy Supporter Zone. The second part of Sleepy Supporter Zone kind of ties in with that. You getting the support you need. If you're having a tough time right now, there's links to resources in the show notes. You could ch also check out BetterHelp and start to form a longer term relationship with a therapist. And then the, the, the third part of the Sleepy Supporter Zone is supporting the mental health of the members of our community. And for me right now, that means when you say Black Lives Matter, you also have to say that Black mental health matters and you have to back that up. So there's links to, 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 to resources in the show notes. But I'm also supporting BEAM. It's a Black Emotional and Mental Health Collective. It's a group of therapists, lawyers, religious leaders, teachers, psychologists, advocates, and activists all working together to support mental and emotional health and healing in the Black community. And if you want to access their resources or support them, use the link that'll be in the show notes. And uh, that's uh, the end of the Sleepy Supporter Zone, which is now over. Oh, Mystery Bard, a lot of people help out on this show. Who are it's they? Posty poster song. Sounds like an earful. Wrote the theme song. Edits episodes too. Carl W. The Lecture. Also edits episodes. Kelly, Scotty, Jennifer, and Ashley. Runner, 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 runner. Eric and the team. Let us down. They're on the website. I am the Mystery Bard. I do the lullabies, yeah. I do commissions at Jonathan Man. I'll write a song for you. It's almost Christmas, y'all. You can tell me the story and you see the kindness shine straight on through When the listeners form their own Facebook group Keith, Stacy, Sarah, Julie, and Jennifer These are your moderators Get support, dear Scooter, on Patreon Buy the merch and support the sponsors You can find anything you want At sleepwithmepodcast.com And we're so proud Thanks, Mystery Bard. Don't forget, you could commission a song from the Mystery Bard for the holiday season, song.jonathanman.net. What do you say we slow it down and get on with the show? Uh, hey, are you up all night tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble getting to sleep, trouble staying asleep? Well, welcome. This is Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. We do with a bedtime story. All you need to do is get in bed, turn out the lights, and press play. I'm going to do the rest. What I'm going to attempt to do is create a safe place where you could set aside whatever's keeping you awake, whether it's thoughts, you know, things you're thinking about, feelings, anything emotionally coming up for you. Where you say, okay, I'm feeling something about that. I don't know. You know, normally it's not... It can be good. Sometimes good or excited feelings can keep us awake. They never get any glory, you see. Because usually if you're excited about you get waking up, then later you, you, your grouchiness is like a little bit, uh, I don't know, like, a, I don't know, what the, I don't have the vocabulary to say it, but something eclipsed by your whatever the joyous event is. But it could be a, a feelings uh, about the past, present, future, or just a general, the old generalized feelings. Talk about a feeling that's resentful. You see, who are you calling generalized? They say, well, I don't know. I, that was just what it said in the DSVM-5, the IV, the one v V1. And everybody laughs. Everybody that knows what it is laughs because they say, Scoots, it's not the DSVM. I'd say, are you sure about that? It's gray, right? Uh, I can see it. 
I pulled that thing. You know where you know where it's eat good to find those. Uh, and this isn't a joke about the content. It's just that a lot of those end up in the uh, the bin because uh, I'm sure a lot of people set out on that path either to read. Who who would say that? Oh boy, I can't wait to sit down and crack this manual, Dinos, whatever it is. It's got a lot of letters and some I think Roman numerals in here. It's a di- it's a, not only is it di- not only is it a manual it's a diagnostic manual, and I think the S probably stands for like uh, standardized or something, and even generalized as and yeah I'm not even like I may be listed in there but I'm not on the cover, and I'd say well you're on the cover you're on the cover of so many things for me you're on the top of my covers when I'm trying to go to sleep and when I get up sitting there old generalized different things anyway so it could be feelings could be physical sensations it could be interrelated stuff it could be something else whatever is keeping you awake i'd like to take your mind off of that and keep you company just like a friend would uh, chitter chattering away uh, while you fall asleep that's it i'm here to take your mind off of stuff while you fall asleep and what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a safe place Uh, i'm smoothing it i'm patting it you know, slowly, like I said in the past, how slowly, if you fell asleep and I was there, I would slow, well, this is why it's a podcast. I would slowly back out of the room. Then I would definitely tumble on some stuff. Then I would probably sing the song, I tumble for you. I tumble for you. Um, And then... I'd, hopefully I'd sing that in a low tone. Then you say, oh boy, now, the, you know, now everybody else is awake. And then you say, did you hire that was a story? To, I thought it was a podcast. And he said, well, it was an add-on. He'd come over. He'd re- That's how I make you appreciate the podcast. You say, Scoots, you know, I don't know about this sleep with me podcast anymore. I'd say, well, invite me over to do the podcast in person. And you'll believe me, you say, what are those? What did you have? Like Ritz covered saltine crackers? What are those crumbs? I've never seen it. It's uh, the, all those crumbs together in one place. Is that bird seed? Um, could have been. I don't know. We'll do like, uh, that's why, you know, you see, what did you trip over? Well, I brought, I bring my own things. Uh, bring my, I sprinkle Legos around the floor just to make you appreciate the podcast. That's why I do it. It's the only time I can Im- imitate Homer Simpson is when I'm, I have a handful of crackers and I'm putting crackers in my mouth uh, and I'm backing out of your room quietly. That's to keep my mouth from making any noises while I'm back. And then I step on those Legos. I thought what I thought was like, you know, I try to, you know, they say don't multitask, but I figured... You know, if I ever had to be, like, a quiet mover, like in the movies, uh, like, in, you know, like, like if I was going to be in one of those Mission, Mission Impossible movies, uh, if they ever needed me, not that they would, but just in case they did, I wanted to be ready. So I said, well, I'm going to do this podcast over here just in case your mission, should you choose to accept it, you know, this room, this uh the secrets, uh, you know, they're going to make, once again, they're going to make the Eiffel Tower into something. I'm not sure if it's a superconductor or a giant Tesla coil that will erase all known knowledge on the earth uh, and crash, you know, crash whatever, all the databases. Uh, don't take that idea and run with it, by the way, super geniuses. Uh, but, yeah, the plans are in a room uh, that's very dark and covered in Legos. And also, the only way, there's also this other thing. The, the only thing that can confuse it is a sandwich of Ritz crackers and saltine crackers crunching and being dribbled along the room. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm here to do a sleep podcast. Sorry, I got drift, I got drifted off there. So that's why you don't invite me over. Just one of the one of the reasons, one of the many reasons. That's why I come in podcast form. So what I'm going to do? I got a safe place, and none of that stuff's there. That's what's great. Just this, just this podcast, and you, it's flexible. You could set a sleep timer. You could listen to episode after episode. 
You could start it at start it at thirty minutes tomorrow. Whatever works for you. But I'm gonna send my voice across the deep dark night. I'm gonna use lulling, soothing, creaky dulcet tones. Pointless meanders, superfluous tangents. So I'm gonna go off topic, which we've seen already, and not really go anywhere. That would be like if I was trying to back out of your room, but it's not, you know, it's not my room. So I might, if I'm backing out, you really should only back out of rooms you know the layout of. And I'd say, well, how'd I get on this side of the bed? Now I got an entire, now I got to recross an entire room of Legos. Uh, maybe I should have worn shoes. And I say, oh boy, not hard, anything but hardwood floors. And they say, no, it's laminate floors. And I say, when it comes to Legos, it doesn't make a difference. Uh, I'm barefooted, and also they're, they're they're borrowed Legos, so I can't I couldn't put shoes on any even if I wanted to because then how would I return them in the original? You know. And also, here's the thing: if I wanted to do any like uh, product placement, if any companies are listening that aren't Lego, like Playmobil, it, it, Playmobil would fit in this image perfectly. As a matter of fact, it would be, you know, be even better because you'd say, I've always wanted to play with those Playmobiles. I mean, I did with my daughter. We got second, we got a, what do you call it? It could not hand me down. We were gifted, pre-played with a Playmobil by, a, uh, by my, my, my friend is and sometimes a listener, Evelyn. Hopefully I don't wake Evelyn up. Uh, but so let's see. Where was I? Oh, so I'm going to send my voice across the deep dark night, lowing, soothing tones, creaky dulcet, pointless managers, all to help you fall asleep to take your mind off of stuff. So if you're new, here's a couple of things to know. One, a lot of people don't like this show when they first listen. I would say most people. So that's a normal or you're just not sure about it. So give it a few tries. And that's only to benefit you is because this podcast is very different. You don't really listen to it. Just like if I was there in person. And, you know, we had contingency where he said, don't bring any Legos or crackers or just don't bring anything except for a bedtime story and just sit there. And then, like, also, never mind. We'll just listen. to See, you'd say, well, just listen to the podcast. That's easier. So just barely listen. But just like you were calling a friend on the phone or chatting with them or whatever. And you said, I'm not going to listen, but you just tell me about your lunch and uh, your nature walk. So it's a podcast you don't really listen to. It's also a podcast that doesn't put you to sleep. I would just keep you company while you fall asleep. So there's no pressure. The shows are over an hour or around an hour. So you got plenty of time to drift off. And if you can't sleep, if you can't fall asleep or you just can't sleep at all, I'm here for you. I'll be here to the very end to keep you company. So that's uh, that, uh, and this is going to be a holiday show, like our, oh, so structure of the show. Yeah, so structure of the show. Show starts off their greeting, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, friends beyond the binary. So, you know, you see, you're see seen and welcome here. Then it's resources for the listener. Then our Patreon and a sponsor, uh, usually. Then more resources for the listeners, a supporter zone. Then an intro, that's like six minutes. Then the intro which goes from like minute six to minute 20 something. And the intro is separate from the business where I just kind of try to explain what the podcast is and I get distracted. So it's like, I'm trying to explain what the podcast is for you, the new listener, but you, or yeah, you, yeah, the regular listener, I'm trying to take your mind off of stuff every single episode in a new way that's familiar so that your brain or your feelings or your emotions or your physical sensations can't adapt. Uh, so I can keep taking your mind off of stuff. And the regular listener knows that this podcast, it just doesn't work instantly. It slowly works. When it works, you don't even notice. So the reason the intro in the beginning is like 20 minutes is to ease you into bedtime. And so you can fold the podcast into your bedtime routine, however you discover works for you. And people use it in different ways. And like I said, there's about 2% of people that skip ahead to 20 minutes and start the show there. But for 98% of listeners, they're using the intro 
as they're getting ready for bed or as they're in bed getting comfortable or as they're drifting off. So just to see how it goes. So that's the intro. Then there's business. That's how we're able to bring you the podcast free. Then there's our story. And tonight it'll be our episodically modular, uh, somewhat serialized holiday soap opera as the North Pole turns. And we'll be talking, you know, just be, it'll be very sleepy. You say, it's a soap opera? And I'd say, well, it has soap operatic elements, uh, heavy on the bubbles, I'd say. And then there'll be thank you. So this is structure of the show. What else do you need to know? Well, this is a podcast you don't really, oh yeah, we said that, don't really listen to it. I think that's it. I mean, I make the podcast because I believe you deserve a good night's sleep and that your world will be better if you get the rest you need. And that'll make our world better. It'll just be nice, right, for everybody involved. And I also make it because I've been there on the other side, tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble, getting to sleep, trouble, staying asleep. So I know how it feels and I'd love to help. And I think that's it. I'm really glad you're here. I really work hard. I yearn and I strive. I really uh, hope I can help you fall asleep. Thanks again for coming by. And here's a couple of ways I'm able to bring you this podcast twice a week. All right, everybody. It's time to talk about a new sponsor, but it's a sponsor I've been using for a long time, and that's Headspace. We all know life can be stressful even under normal circumstances, but 2020 has challenged even the most difficult times of life. You need stress relief that goes beyond quick fixes, and that's Headspace. Headspace is one of the only meditation apps advancing the field of mindfulness and meditation through clinically validated research and can reduce stress, improve sleep, boost focus, and increase your overall sense of well-being. And 2020 has been the year of Headspace. Actually, at the beginning of 2020, we had some family stuff going on, and Sophia and I started to work Headspace into our nightly routine. Father and daughter meditating together. Well, father, daughter, and Andy, who you'll get to know when you download Headspace. Uh, We really relied on Andy night after night to help us uh, practice mindfulness. And to add tools to our toolbox, we've used it almost every single night of uh, 2020. And I laugh because we had a really long streak going, over 180 days. And uh, then I forgot one night when Sophia wasn't at my house when I used Headspace by myself, I was supposed to use it. And uh, I just skipped that one night. So sorry, Sophia. But Headspace has really, really made a difference in my year. It's made 2020 much more manageable. And it's about having those tools in your toolbox. It's about living in the present moment. It's about giving something to yourself, something that works. So do not pause. I, I want you to do this right now. I want you to go to headspace.com slash sleep with me for a free one month trial. So pretty much every listener should do this. I should hear from everyone because that's the best deal they offer right now. Free. It's a free one month trial by going to headspace.com slash sleep with me me and then reach out to me. Let me know you got the free trial going and then I can tell you about some of the different meditations and the different courses we took over this year. Some of the ones we really, really love. So it's headspace.com slash sleep with me and get it. It's free. Get over there. Start it. You deserve it. Uh, thanks everybody. All right, everybody. It's gift giving season and your shopping is over because it's this simple. Get the people in your lives a blend jet. My daughter, I wish I would have held it off and given it to her as a holiday gift. She loves the blend jet. Not only does it help you make uh, healthy choices, uh, but it's fun to use. Blend jet is a blender on the go. The original portable blender that makes it easy to create a fresh meal anytime, anywhere. You know, you could skip the takeout or the prepackaged snacks and imagine making yourself a healthy smoothie. With blend jet, you're only 20 seconds away from that fresh smoothie or protein shake. You could make cocktails, bake 
baby food, salad dressing, omelets, salsa soup. We've done it all. My daughter loves mixing up different uh, smoothies and shakes uh, literally two, two times a day. She does them for breakfast and for lunch or a healthy snack. BlendJet is compact and lightweight. It's just a perfect gift. That, that's all I got to say. You just listen for this amazing deal. But it's compact and lightweight. It's about the size of your favorite water bottle. But it packs big blender power. It, it is really impressive. The new and improved BlendJet 2 quietly crushes through ice and frozen fruits. Plus, you could use it every day for two weeks before charging from any standard USB ports. They come in these amazing colors. It really has this premium, premium feel. And it's just so handy. It's like one of those things that you would give someone and they're going to use every single day. And they're going to think about it. Who gave me this BlendJet? Oh, it was you. BlendJet makes a perfect gift for everyone on your list who's looking to eat healthy and loves owning the latest must-have fitness accessory. And don't take my word for it. I mean, everybody's talking about this thing online. It's the number one blender brand on Instagram with over 17,000 five-star reviews, over 1 million happy customers around the world. And now you get to try it risk-free with BlendJet's 30-day money-back guarantee. Just go to BlendJet.com slash sleep right now to save an extra 12%. That means you you could save an extra 12% at blendjet.com slash sleep. And let me know, pick out some colors. Let me know what colors you're going to gift people in your lives. Because if you wait till you see that, it's just so fun. Wait till you see these popping colors. That's at blendjet.com slash sleep. Thanks, everybody. All right, everybody. It's time for our episodically modular soap opera series, which means it has a repetitive seriality. Which means, which really underlies the fact that it's episodically modular. Only three episodes. You can listen to them in any order. And uh, the character, this episode is hosted. It's mostly dialogue. It's I guess it's led by, uh, who's that character? I'm sorry, Claude Neon. I, I wasn't kidding, but that's just how my mind works, Claude. Uh, but yeah, so this is, a, again, this is an episodically modular series is set at the North Pole. I think in Toy Town is the central location, but I don't know. And uh, it, it's an elven story. So if you're a fan of elves, uh, you, you, you may enjoy this story. So without further ado, I turn things over. Oh, first, uh, sorry, I forgot you were lying there waiting. First, our Hollywood announcer. I mean, talk about a holiday treat. What's it like driving up five during, you know, that that must be give you plenty of time driving back and forth uh, to just think about holiday things and good wishes and all the goodwill you're going to sp- spread around the world. Have you ever played Santa Claus? Uh, the, the, answer the question, please, on the mic. Uh, this is Mr. Antonio Banderas. Uh, thank you, Scooter. Uh, the ladies, the gentlemen, the boys, the girls, the friends beyond the binary. It's time for as the North Pole turns. Happy holidays. Yes, Scooter, thank you. Uh, I have played uh, Santa Claus. Uh, yes, I have. Ho, 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 ho. All right, thanks, Antonio. Thanks for modulating your tones there, too. Uh, this is uh, As the North Pole Turns. All right, Claude Neon here. I'm uh, re- recording all this for posterity. And uh, let me just see if I could run through uh, what, what the events of thus far. I, I arrived at the North Pole after what is known as the Great Electric Slide. Uh, to help uh, research these events and uh, to to uh, clear things up. Uh, you, you may or may not know that I was a North Pole elf, but we don't need to get into that, my personal stuff. I'm here with Balsamica, uh, the, the keeper of the melodrama here at the North Pole, or st- I guess stirrer of melodrama. Uh, and talking to myself in Balsamica's presence so that Balsamica can, you know, use body language to steer me in the right direction as I recount the events of the Great Electric Slide and why I'm here. 
and what it is important for me to remember. Uh, so the North Pole had uh, opened up a new electronics facility that uh, was going to be up and running, uh, ideally, for this holiday season. Uh, just it also, The amazing thing was it was ready to go uh, to produce electronic toys, electronic tether ball, Oh, the year is, well, I don't want to get too specific, but some of you may be listening to this far in the future. So remember the 1980s, if you would, because that's where I am right now. That's pretty cool. You might be in the future. I don't think you could listen in the past unless you have some sort of power I don't know about. So let's see, where am I? Oh, who am I? Who, what, uh, what happened? Uh, so they opened an electronics facility and it was a very efficient facility because the solid state electronics is more of an assembly facility, which is a little bit different for the elves, uh, because, uh, and it stirred up some controversy that, uh, we're assembling solid state electronics like mostly just putting parts together and uh, not crafting a toy. But as part of this great accord they made with the lower world to, to maintain relevance in the you know face of multinational toy corporations. Also, I'm using my official voice for this because I just uh, I thought I'd be official with you. So they opened the facility. There's mixed feelings. Uh, some el- elven workers were like, hey, this is great. Uh, you know, I can make toys as a hobby and then assemble toys as my job. And, you know, there's a smaller percentage. They said, well, I don't really care. This is easy. Uh, and, you know, then it became a general, oh, this generation, they just want to assemble toys. They don't know. They don't know. You know, th- those whole things, which none of that was really true. And you may be hearing something in my tone that s- s- simulates, like, these things happen sometimes in a dearth of leadership. And, I mean, a heart-based, uh, empathy and compassion-based leadership uh, where people begin to, to, to formulate into groups who say, well, the younger kids, all oh, those older elves, you know, they don't, they think they know everything, those kind of things. Uh, and in the North Pole, we all know uh, who, who's the, you know, the, the, the leader. The, now, there's the Elven Leadership Council. That's different. Uh, but, uh, you know, leadership comes from the top. And the leadership just hadn't been there. Uh, but that's not, I mean, I guess this is that people would say, well, you don't even live here anymore, Claude. So you, what do you know about San Claus or any of that? Uh, we're doing just fine. We don't need you coming back here, stirring up trouble. But I said, well, it seems like trouble stirred up, uh, and I got here just in time. Now I had arrived actually to look into something else, a, uh, like, uh, ABs, uh, who we'll be interviewing soon. But so, okay, so the Great Electric Site, electronic facility opened, ready to go into production. Just a few uh, days of production was all that was needed from this high-efficiency facility to introduce and fill the orders uh, for this year's electronics toys. Now, next year, they'd probably be, the facility would have been ideally fully functioning during the entire uh, calendar year. This year was just a teaser, but it was a large order. But again, this was a large facility. And Pro Sarah, uh, an elven uh, person, an elven, a person of uh, uh, elven, an elf uh, with very strong feelings, uh, disrupted the, this event. And in the name of uh, all that was a toy, you know, decent and toy filled with joy. Uh, had I guess you know pre- prepared in a you know in a way to uh, uh, use electromagnetism and glacial glaciers and uh, LEDs to uh, open up a chasm and deposit the electronics facility in a chasm with a glacier on top. Uh, obviously rendering it no longer working. And uh, Bruce, Bruce Sarah's goal was also to wipe out all the knowledge uh, that had been accumulated about solid state toys and the such. And that was mostly successful. It was very dramatic or melodramatic. And 
Procera now is uh, un- under observation because uh, they said, well, what, what do you mean? You, you don't remember doing any of this? Uh, and then Procera said, well, I have a twin. Maybe it was my twin, which didn't really quite come together because uh, they said, well, I was score Anyway, so per- per- Procera, the, right now it's, a ne- you know, uh, all or nothing things really aren't that important. Whether per se, or, you know, what, the, the elves have, a, or the elven people have a way to deal with that. And it'll be dealt with after the holiday season. Now, there's a more pressing issue at the hand. But I think that's all we learned last time. You know, Ingelmani, Atlantica, Abies, who are about to, to, to help, uh, Depeana. All leaders in toy and toy production here at the North Pole and Balsamica. So what we're going to go do next? We're about, well, Balsamica is going to go into AB's room, a timeout room where AB's is having a timeout, and talk to AB's. And I'm here to kind of help. Uh, AB's is an old family friend. I'll be honest. I got to be full disclosure at this point. And, you know, I didn't plan on returning to the North Pole, but they said, well, ABs has been, well, I think Balsamica will, will get to the bottom of all that. Uh, but just what I needed to know to make sure I reminded myself is that uh, Procera wiped out the electronics facility. There is an underlying feeling. Now, there's, oh boy, this is another piece of information I want to underline. I understand so there's, uh, the, the, you know, the glory nights of holiday season are the 24th and the 25th, and then maybe the start of the season, uh, Thanksgiving, uh, which is celebrated in the U.S. This is it happens in the lower world. But here in the North Pole, uh, you know, there's a lot of other days that have a lot bigger deals, and one of those is like uh, the day the, 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 the sleigh is officially packed and all the or- other orders that are going to the toy companies are shipped out. Uh, but the last orders are delivered by Santa to the toy companies, distribution points, and also, you know, the, to, to selected individual children around the globe. But that has to be done. You can't just give, you know, we, we, you know even though the Hollywoodization is, uh, shows us pack in the sleigh on the 23rd and 24th, uh, that's just not what happens. There's a, a critical day the sleigh has to be packed. And that day is coming right up. Uh, and there is concern. We don't have the electronic toys. So that's another underlying tension here uh, to, to today in the North Pole. And Balsamic is looking at me and nodding. So Balsamic is about to go into uh, AB's room and talk to AB's, uh, who is uh, who, whose name I'm here to help clear. I hope, uh, uh, because uh, otherwise, uh, you know, my my mom will not be happy with me. Uh, so the, go, go ahead, Balsamic is what? No, I'm in the observation room, so I'm going to listen in along with all of us. Hey, ABs. Uh, oh, hey, hey, Balsamica. What are you doing here? Are you uh, here to help? Are you here to get me get me out of here? Uh, why am I here, ABs? Well, uh, do you, so you know about everything that's happened. The great electric slide, they're already calling it. Yeah, I heard. Procera really, I mean, I mean, come on. Everybody knows Procera was... Uh, Kind of saw the world and painted bold colors and didn't necessarily was very uh, okay. Whoa, 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 ABs. Because, uh, you know, what, what does someone say when they plant a seed and a tree grows uh, years later in the place of that seed? Do they say, huh? Looks like that seed, they they, they talk about the seed and, and the pro that's one of our traditions, uh, the evergreen growth cycle. Uh, sorry, I'm not following you, Balsamica. <laughs> You're following me, Abies. Come on. You've been the one writing letters, writing these man, man what they call manifestos about toys, about electronic toys, 
about degradation of elven effort, of elven craftsmanship. You've been talking about this long before electronic toys even came along. But you said that these handheld games were the last straw of, uh, like, and you predict a future where just there'd be just a few elven toy craftspeople uh, that are very obscure and are all, you know, then only, you know, only people who get the, you know, win, you know, the billions to one chance that Santa actually comes to their home or can buy toys that are built by, you know, you know, we, we, I know I've read everything you've written. Oh, I guess you're a fan, huh? Uh, I respect it. You actually, it's very well written, uh, I, uh, I would love to be in the room where it happens. Uh, well, I don't know what you mean, Balsamic. I don't know, like, uh, because it's just, I'm just there writing, oh, writing and writing. Uh, oh, sorry. It was, uh, I, I was thinking of something else. Um, but yeah, you said this was the end of the elves. You, you, you kind of, each one, like, in, increased in intensity. You, you kind of point out the action figures, and once we started producing action figures and uh, uh, figurines and, and dolls, plastic-based dolls, assembling those uh, for the toy companies because of Ingomani's packs, uh, that that was it. Uh, this is bad news for elves. So, so what would you expect someone like Procera to do with that kind of information? Uh, pro, like stop working, maybe? Uh, um, think about it and then think about what Procera or uh, like you saying Procera specifically or so you said someone like Procera so I'll answer your question in that manner is uh, to think about things and wonder what do they want and what do they see for the future of the elven people and uh, you know, I know there's a great, you know, the myths about, they say, oh boy, what about Tolkien's elves? Or what about these elves? Or, you know, maybe we should go see some of them. You know, there, there's the elven seekers. But you know as well as I do that most people aren't welcome back after they leave. And that's really what we're here to talk about anyway. Unless you have something, are you saying uh, it, it conspired with Procera to do all this? Because, uh... It really wouldn't make any sense. And in fact, I was very, uh, my attention, uh, you, you know, I mean, come on, let's just talk about what we're here to talk about, okay? Instead of talking about, unless you're, you're talking about something else and I'm talking about something else. Well, I just was wondering if you're going to take any responsibility for the fact that, uh, you, you, you know, this is you probably, you probably do need to take some responsibility for this. Uh, you, not that you have to take any public responsibility or suffer any consequences. Everyone was fine except for the electronics facility. But uh, I'm just wondering if you're going to think about anything and if you're going to think about stuff. I've been thinking about it. I got nothing to do in here. So, yeah, I've been thinking about it. And yes, you're right, uh, that, uh, well, I don't know. I can't control, I don't know. I'm torn. Uh, okay. Yeah, I'm torn. Uh, but maybe I'm extra torn because of my current situation. And I'm just wondering if you're familiar with, like, uh, don't, are you going to let this happen? Okay. Well, I'm here because, yeah, you're, you've been accused, uh, of lying to Santa Claus and, uh, you know, there are people trying to get to the bottom of it and help, but it is your word against Santa. And, uh, I mean, that, that there's only one side. If it's you, you know, you and Santa, there's only one side. You know, Santa's word is the final word. What Santa says, Santa says, as we say, you know, even as we're children, what Santa says, Santa says, and Santa doesn't say much, but Santa said you're you're not telling the truth, and uh, that means uh, you know banishment from the North Pole forever. And uh, I'm sorry, but, but uh, it, I don't see how we're able to get to the bottom of this either. Well, you so. 
Do you know exactly what I lied to Santa about? Now, believe it or not, I don't. I know Santa has said that you lied to Santa, Santa Claus, and to, to start the process and give you a timeout to, to think about it. This would have been your last, you know, during the timeout. Traditionally, this rarely has happened, but it has happened before. You know, there's a time, that, that, like, I mean, usually it's in the cookie, the elves that eat the cookies or drink the milk situation. And they say, no, Santa, I didn't eat the dog. Must eat. You know, that's the most common one we've dealt with. Uh, and uh, this is neither a milk nor cookie situation because it's before, you're not on the, you know, the Christmas Eve watch list. And uh, so I don't know what you lied to Santa about just that Santa said you lied and to start the process, which were at the tail end of the process of banishment. And you will, would be the first elf and that didn't admit they lied to Santa and then, you know, seek. So no, but I don't know, uh, honestly. And it's just, uh, like, and, and yeah, you won't be able to participate in the holiday joy which I feel terrible about. I just want to, uh, I just, we, 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 I, we want to help. Uh, I know you, 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 your friends are reaching out on your behalf. I mean, I know a lot of the workers identify with you, but they also say, well, this is separate from this labor, like relations stuff. Uh, well, yeah, the funny thing is that it's not. Uh, so, I mean, this is just a matter of Santa getting Santa's away, and this is like this is ridiculous. Like, so here's the thing: you, like, uh, Bell, I'm like, I didn't lie to Santa. I told Santa the truth. Okay. So, I mean, if you don't even if you don't if you don't even know the lie, uh, I mean, I think you do. I think that's why you're dragging this out from like, uh, isn't this what you do? Isn't this your technique, the melodramatic technique? to get to the bottom of stuff because it's just not like I told Santa the truth. I mean, I guess that's like, I don't know what else to say other than that. Okay. So let me say, let me try to go with, say yes to what you're saying. So you told Santa the truth. Uh, so why would Santa say it's not true that you lied? It was a truth Santa didn't want to hear. I mean, it's really that simple. Okay. And was it about the electronic toys? Like you were trying to tell Santa the, the, that uh, some truth about the electronic toys or about Procera and what Procera was doing that Santa didn't want to hear? And this now you're conveniently... Is Santa using this as a convenient way to deal with this situation? You could tell me that. It would help me know what's happening. No, no, no. It has nothing to do with electronic toys or anything. And if I tell you, I can't untell. I can't untell you or whoever else is here with you. So there's no like uh, you, this. I guess your melodramatic trait. To, okay, I'll tell you what it was Santa's saying. I'm lying about. Not what I'm accused of lying about, but wh why? Well, can't you tell me what you're accused? No, because it's already my word again. Okay. Here's what happened. Underneath the mistletoe, one summer night, Santa saw me kissing Mrs. Coloss. I'm, I'm sorry, what? Yeah, that's what happened. Uh, Santa... Underneath the mistletoe, one night, Santa saw me kissing Mrs. Coloss. Wait a second. You, you, so you, you, wait, whoa, whoa, you were kissing Mrs. 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 Santa, Mrs. Santa Claus. Yeah, I was kissing Mrs. Coloss, and uh, there's a lot more to, do, to it than just that. Oh, somebody's opening and closing. Oh, hey, Engelmani. Hey, ABC. Hey, Balsamica. I kind of got a situation here. D don't mean to interrupt. Um, well, you both seem like you're, uh, that I interrupted. I wish I knew what I interrupted. Do you want to tell me? Cause it seems like it's pretty juicy. 
No, it seems like you have something. Yeah, we need ABs. I have actually a sign off uh, for ABs to be uh, to come with me. Okay, what, what is what is this about? Well, we we can't. We got to make our Christmas quota. We're really short, and every department ran their numbers, and we're going to be short. We just cannot make it, and that would mean. Would uh, like a, a bargain. We would have to choose either under deliver to the to, to toys. Santa's been, you know, the raffle to Santa delivering the children of the world, or uh, under delivering to the toy companies that would then violate our compacts, which would have consequences uh, for the North Pole that Santa knows about. So don't say, oh boy, what it, what, all deals that Santa has signed off on. And, uh, you know, we could underfill both or underfill one, but we can't fill every, you know, we can't fill, we can't, we can't fill, we need uh, ABs. Okay, well, um, what do you need ABs for? Well, we need ABs to, to uh, motivate you know, Abies is a very motivating force with the, the, the uh, all the elves, and Abies is also an expert in traditional elven line production versus assembly line production, which is similar but different. And uh, Depiana has a theory that we could combine both styles of work and that Abies could weigh in in a way that this doesn't change, you know, that, that, uh, we also take some time. We're going to work in small groups to, to get the toy orders filled, I guess is what I'm saying. Okay. Um, yeah, that may, well, uh, okay. I, I guess I'm fine with it. Abies. No, thank you. What do you mean? No, thank you. Abies. This is a, uh, this is your chance. So is Santa going to take away the, the charge of lying to Santa Claus? Is that what this is really about? It, Santa is. Santa said, uh, yeah, this, if you get these orders filled, that uh, it all will be forgiven. Well, all, all will be forgiven, huh? That's Santa's exact words. I don't believe it. I, I believe that uh, I'll help and then... What about the children of the world, Abies? What about uh, what about our like? We want to keep the elves working, don't we? I thought that was what we and I have discussed over the years. And you know we've had our disagreements and our agreements. So boy, have our agreements been good, eh, Abies? Remember those? Okay, let's just focus on our disagreements for the time being. Yeah, but I, I care about the children of the world. I care about the elves. Oh, also, I have uh, uh, Mrs. Kloss said that to sweeten the pot, she uh, made your favorite cookies, uh, the ones with the melted candy canes in them. Oh, she said you can only have them while you're working on helping us uh, save Christmas. Okay, I'll go. Oh, there's your daughter, Alanica, opening and closing the door. Hey, everybody, it's me. Hey, Atlantica, hey, Atlantica, hey, Atlantica, hey, Atlantica. Hey, everybody. That was a lot of hay. So, uh, what are we, horses? Um, uh, Balsamica, I need, um, I, I need your help. Okay, what do you need my help with? Uh, is it okay if everybody's part of this? Yeah, because we're about to start working together. Well, Procera got out of, uh, Procera's, uh, attached. We needed Procera to, uh, help, uh, with figuring this out as well, you know, because Procera is also an expert in, in, in a lot of these things that would have helped us get the toy orders filled by the holiday season. And when we were walking over to the uh, to, to, to TPT, TP, to the toy production and distribution facility number four, uh, Procera ran to town square and uh, attached Procera self to uh the great, uh, giving, ever giving tree, evergreen giving tree, giving tree of giving, evergreen green, you know, the tree, the great tree. And really doing a lot of yelling and, and stuff like that. Uh, um, 
then we, uh, yeah, so can you help with that? Uh, sure. We're like, okay, let's, uh, let's, uh, everyone, I'm going to head out and, uh, go get Procera and I'll see everyone later. Okay. 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 Bye. Okay. Bye. Okay. Bye everyone. Uh, uh, opening, closing, closing that door. Uh, maybe I should leave this door open since everyone's leaving anyway. Opening, uh, okay, uh, let's go out this other door, uh, Claude. So, that's interesting, so, wait a second, did ABC was kissing Mrs. Coloss underneath the mistletoe one summer night? Uh, yes, uh, they were. Okay, that's, that's interesting. Uh, I got one other thing I was wondering about, uh, what was that? I think uh, I, I think something is going on with uh, Procera. What do you think that is? Uh, well, I mean, let's we're, we're we're headed towards the tree, right? Yeah. So we need Procera to help with uh, this, uh, and then Procera says, "Oh, there we're already here." Hey, Procera. This is a uh, Procera. This is a uh, Claude Neon, Claude Neon Procera. Hi, nice to meet you. Uh, well, I'm yeah, I'm. Uh, I've attached myself to this tree, and I've decided not to help at all uh, with the, the holiday stuff because uh, I like after everybody just do, like because uh, I don't I don't recall doing any of the stuff everybody said I did. And, uh, the, like, uh, the, the, like, so, so I'm just going to stay attached to this tree and not help. Okay. Uh, that's, uh, Balsam, okay, let me handle this. Why don't you just observe, uh, okay, Claude. Okay, so you're not going to do anything. Yeah, well, I guess we don't probably, we probably don't need your help, uh, because, uh, you're probably not the real Procera anyway. And we just have to find your twin, the actual real Procera, who will actually have some knowledge to be able to uh, help us get this toy order filled. So could you just let us know where the real Procera is? Uh, um, no, no, I can't let you know where the real Procera is. Okay, well... Uh, I guess what we'll do is we'll just move on without you. And, uh, I mean, we really could use you, I'll be honest. And I know a lot of people miss you because I've already been able to tell, uh, you know, that you have some tight relationships with some of these, uh, elven leaders. Um, and I don't know if you really have a twin or not. And, and I'll be honest, like, I don't, at this point, it's not my concern. My mind, you know, I have other things in my mind at this point. And I even am willing to put aside even my uh, resistance to uh, being a part of this, uh, these North Pole traditions and, and push my sleeves up and get to work uh, because we only have a little bit of time to save Christmas. And in the end, that's really what it's about. But you could stay here. That's fine. And I'm pretty sure the call went out to every elf. Uh, I mean, even Abies and Depion are going to be working together. Atlantic will be there. Ingomani may be doing manual labor even. And I'm sure that uh, if, if if every elf is working, also I'll just be honest with you, we we do have that new thing with uh, with we can see elven body heat right from the sky. Uh, it's, uh, it's, 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 they've been testing that out on uh, Santa sleigh and backup sleigh. So the sleigh is going to be circling the North Pole. If every elf is working uh, to put toys together for the how to save Christmas or to save, you know, the Elven Toy Production Act of uh, 1981 and 1917, uh, whatever, 1978 or toy courts, whatever they called it, you know what I mean. 
what we, the great thing is, so far there's been no other resistance. There's been people that have been a little uh, curmudgeon -y. We'll be able to see where we'll find your twin. Because usually what happens in these twin situations in the past I've seen in the lower world is, uh, you know, the, the twin that's up, to, you know, that's stirring up trouble. No offense, uh, but that seems to be what you're doing. Some would say stirring up good trouble. But it's trouble nonetheless, you know, dropping a glacier on an electronics toy facility. Uh, the, I'm sure that the multinational corporations had it insured, but whatever, like, uh, that's trouble, whether you, however you look at it. Uh, but then there'll be two signatures, your signature and then your uh, twin signature. Uh, and if we don't find your twin, if there's only one signature, we could assume that you're making it up... Uh, or that your twin is lost, left the North Pole, which we could then go back and check that to see uh, all the exits from the North Pole in the last uh, 30 to 365 days. And then it could you might you might end up being banned from the North Pole. And then how are you going to help everybody? How are you going to take, take, you know? Uh, so... Okay, so I don't, what if I, so I do, what if I don't have, so, ooh, you got me with that evil twin stuff. Yeah, I, okay, uh, I'll help, I'll help, I'll help. All right, let's, uh, let's, um, let's, uh, like, uh, there's this, there's a thick snowstorm, so let's, like, uh, let's go through the snowstorm quietly but very oh there's that speed walkway right uh, to get to the toy production facility on the other oh yeah we're about to get on it oh, hey everyone this is Claude Neon I just want to let you know that uh, I, we got right to work so I didn't really uh, wasn't able to bring you along because some of our you know some of the some of there's still the uh, coverage of uh, some of the techniques uh, can explain some of it. I'll be it'll be explained here because I'm about to go to the big great. Uh, the sleigh is packed, uh, so this is the biggest celebration in the North Pole. And some would think that tr the 26th is a big day because, uh, but it's not. This is the big one. This is the big blowout because the sleigh is packed. Yes, there's still work to do, but you know you see teams when they win the the before the championship. Sometimes that party's even bigger because, uh, so this is a big night of celebration, particularly tonight. So we're, uh, the celebration this year is in the to toy production facility. We got everything done and I'm going to go and kind of, so I see Balsamica and Ingelmani. So I'm going to stand, you know, by them and listen in and, oh, Ingelmani looking, uh, very uh, functional in your dress tonight. Thanks, Balsamica. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm just glad we got everything done. I mean, even though people say that, you know, I'm just like looking to please everybody or please the toy companies or, you know, try to keep, keep everybody happy, which makes nobody happy. Uh, we really averted a big one here, and now we'll have time. I mean, the, in, the the electronic toys are inevitable, right? But we also have some extra leverage because I really, pl I mean, you, well, you heard me in my speech, but I really played up the fact that uh, they, uh, to the toy company said, we said, well, we're really weighing delivering. I, I, I made it because, uh, well, we, we really want to keep the delivery of the toys to the children of the world. So we're not going to be able to fill all your orders, which will leave you short for the last buying week of the season. And, you know, they weren't happy about that. And I said, well, there's not much we could do other than, uh, you know, say that no electronic toys will ever be made at the North Pole. So, I mean, that's a good thing, I think. Uh, in the end, I think... Uh, well, we'll still be involved in, you know, elven employment for mass production of toys uh, that are not crafted. You know, I never told anyone this balsamica, but, you, you know, uh, when I look in your eyes, uh, and I wonder who crafted those eyes of yours. Uh, 
that I can lose myself in on a night like tonight. Uh, that I, it makes me wonder who I am. And I feel like I'm flying in a sleigh above the clouds up high. Oh, yeah? But what were you going to say, Ingomani? Other than, or just keep talking about my eyes. No, I was going to say that uh, really my underlying belief is that the mass production of toys will spark a renaissance uh, longer lasting in uh, high quality uh, elven produced toys. Yeah, but the problem is that there's no, like, uh, you know what I mean? Like, that, uh, not a, that, that this going to, you know, you you know, you, you know that uh, that's just, it's just not as simple as that. And I'm not talking about the toys. I'm talking about us. Yeah, I know. Um, oh, Atlantica wants to talk. Excuse me, Balsamica. Okay, I'm just gonna stand over here with Claude. Hey, 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 hey! My how's my favorite child? Oh, uh, Angelmani, I'm your only child. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm glad everything's to get done. I mean, Depeana's really a hero. And, uh, I don't know. I mean, can I talk to you, uh, child to parent for a little while? Yeah, you can. Um, well, I, I, I uh, I think... You know, I, I've just been thinking about things with Tepiana, and you know, you know how with Procera, like uh, that, that, that my feelings with Procera. I think I don't know. I, I'm ha You know what I mean? Oh, do I know what you mean, Atlantic? Feelings are complicated. I know. Well, let's, let's look at it this way. Why don't you feel your feelings tonight, but not f think about your feelings tonight, and just enjoy the party. Feel your feelings. Don't think about them and don't act on them. But let them kind of... In, in Wait, so you were falling for, for, for Procera? Yeah, kinda, yeah, maybe. Okay, well, yeah, just try to enjoy the party and... Uh, and, you know, I'll talk to you later. Okay, Claude, I'm going over to Depianus talking with Abies and Procera. Uh, okay, they're kind of being asked to recount their things. Uh, we're all waiting for Santa Claus's arrival in the next uh, few minutes. Oh, so t tell us again, uh, uh, Depiana, how did you figure it out? Like, how did you end up... Uh, well, no, it wasn't me. It was you. Like, the idea of uh, combining... I mean, luckily, I had some of those solid-state chips in my pocket, and that enabled us to, to create the electronic assignment system that uh, we could create the, you know, com combine the, uh, el you know, elven work with the assembly line work. But also the idea that... Uh, Making parts that would wear out that the part the work that goes into making the parts is more work. The one time use parts, uh, like more labor to make the parts than to just make toys was brilliant. I mean, we, we needed it tonight. I didn't realize you had all those in your workshop. Yeah, it was one of my ideas. I didn't think it would ever need, would ever, there'd be, you know, I, I pitched it a couple of times. No one listened because they said, okay, wait a second. So you put a, you, you, you used some of your experimental workforce to create uh, auto assembly line parts uh, that could help assemble toys in a situation just like this. Uh, but when the part the, the parts eventually wear out from use and uh, the actual labor to, to to remake those parts is more than just using making the toys the parts would make. Yeah, it was a it was an idea. Uh, yeah, it was I mean I guess thank you. It was I mean it was it was an idea that like was before its time because those parts have been waiting to be used for years actually. 
I mean, even more on the assembly line with with the, the, the action figures and dolls. Uh, when I was, they said, "Well, we could. Ju- why, why don't we just have automated assembly line?" And there were, you know, luckily we got through those accords uh, together. And Procera, I'm sorry, I do have to talk. I mean, and Ab- Ab- Debiana, you're ha- I'm happy to have you listen in. And I see Balsamica also uh, and uh, Claude Neon listening in. I'm sorry, Procera, that I was like uh, so strong in my tone that, uh, you know, that, that, um, that maybe you got caught up in stuff and, and maybe they, they, like, just like my thing was ahead of its time. I don't know. I want to apologize, but it worked out because now we know how Engelmann, said, we'll never have to make electronic toys unless something unforeseen happened. Like, uh, the, the electronic toys advance in a way, but hopefully we'll never have to make electronic toys. So that's good. Yeah, I mean, I try, like, uh, oh, Santa Claus is coming. Believe it or not, like, uh, between the three of us, uh, I tried to frame everything and uh, imaginary, like, I made up that I had imaginary twin, and I almost had them. But sometimes I feel like I do have a twin. It's just a twin inside me, because I don't know what, like, normally that's just outside, you know, doing all that planning and stuff. Uh, what's in my code? Oh, so you... Uh, you made up an imaginary twin. Yeah, yeah. The, you like that, uh, Abies? I do. Excuse me, I got to go talk to Santa about the, you know, how this whole hubbub is. And I wanted to thank Santa and Mrs. Kloss. Uh, okay, go ahead. Oh, hello, Mrs. Kloss. I was going to talk to Santa. He, he, he doesn't want to, he does, it's probably not a good time. Yeah, how are you? Thanks for the cookies. They really were really, really sweet. Uh, thanks for saving Christmas, Abies. Yeah, I feel the same way. The cookies were sweet, and I made them for you. So has Santa still been acting like, uh, yeah, I mean, it's been going on for years, but there's no, you know, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's like, uh, I almost felt like Santa was hoping that, uh, you know, like that, that you, you wouldn't be able to figure it out. And maybe that, because you didn't lie, uh, I do love you. And, uh, I know he said that was a lie. And I know I told him it, it was a lie. So he believed it because of me. But, and I did. Unintentionally, I did that to pretend, you know, to pretend, I'm sorry for that. Uh, it's okay. He made me those cookies, and I knew what the cookies meant. But, yeah, there's Santa. Santa's ready to make a speech about it. Uh, and uh, look at it. Even in his face, you can see that, fur, like, his bowl isn't full of jelly anymore. And uh, I don't know. It's just not the person... And I didn't sign up for the, the last five or six years of this. Wait a second, the last five or six years, that's when things changed, huh? Yeah, I mean, that's when the toy accords, the uh, change, you know, in- Ingomani. But it's not Ingomani's fault. Santa's the one that, uh, I don't know, maybe it's just me, you know. I, I'm, I, I'm stuck. I know you are. But I'll be here. And uh, we, we, we could get through this together, separately, but together when we can find the time, Mrs. Kloss. Wait a second. I just saw of something. What? Uh, well, Santa, right when Santa takes the mic, I'm going to do something. Okay. Uh, Abies, what are you about to do? Oh, sorry, Claude. I got to tell you. Wait, uh, Santa, before you start speaking, I know the mic's turned on. I just wonder if I could apologize for, uh, I know we had a misunderstanding and most people don't know what the misunderstanding was about. Uh, yes, Abies, uh, ho, 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 go ahead. Uh, and uh, I'm not going to, you know, that's between us, right? Uh, but I did have one question for you, Santa. 
Oh, this is the best time to ask for for forgiveness, A.B. There's no night better to ask for forgiveness. And the answer is yes. No, Santa. I was wondering, because it looks like you have the sleigh ready to go. Oh, yes, I was going to take it for a spin. Yeah, we got the doors open and the, the, the Rudolph and, uh, no, you know, most of the reindeer there. Uh... Oh, one second. Procera seems to be interrupting somebody to that uh, Claude Neon next to you. But go ahead, and then I'll, I'll wait. I'm saying it, but I can still wait. Claude, Claude, uh, it's, it's me, Procera. Yeah, Procera? Did you really send up the sleigh to uh, look around, like, uh, for thermal imaging to see if I actually did have, or were you making that up? Believe it or not, uh... I was doing both. I, I, I sent up the backup sleigh uh, to, to, to take thermal imaging, just in case you did have a twin and you were here, that uh, every elf is in attendance and now Santa and Mrs. Claus are here. So I did do it, but just as a backup. Uh, plus, I would like to keep to my... Thank goodness. Why, Pro Sarah? Oh, Santa's ready to keep speaking. Anyway, Abies, what was your question? Santa, are you uh, not Santa Claus, but Santa's uh, twin, quite possibly an Eve, you know, a twin that would be spelled similar to Santa or uh, a twin that doesn't have our be the elven or the Christmas best intentions in their heart? Uh, is that why you're looking at us so confused now, Santa? Are you not Santa, but Santa's twin? Ho, ho, ho. Good day to you all. Holy cow, this is Claude Neon. Santa just ran off stage glaring, hopped in uh, the, the, the official sleigh full of toys and headed off uh, and into the sky. Now, the only thing, the good thing to know, because everyone here is kind of, so I'm pretty sure... That wasn't Santa Claus, but Santa's twin, and just took off in the sleigh, full of all the toys to be delivered to the toy companies and the children of the world. And uh, like that's there's no backup sleigh full of toys, and I'm I'm not sure this ever happened before. Now the good news is uh, because everyone's lying down because that was so intense. Uh, you had to be here. It feels totally calm to me. We're actually, that's how elves deal with stuff. They say, oh, well, all will be well. We'll figure it out. One of the other things about the, the one of the secrets of the holiday season and why the sleigh has to be packed so early is the reindeer's magic. It kind of works like an ionic, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen like those ionic space engines where it's, they slowly have to circle the North Pole I think it's about 12 hours. Uh, and, I mean, mostly the now the reindeer aren't working the whole time. They work in shifts. Uh, and, I mean, it's much more complicated than they show in the movies. And also a lot of it's on the, like, because of the rotation of the Earth and some sort of other ionic energy. I'm not on the tech team here at the North Pole, so I don't know how the sleigh works. The backup sleigh's coming in with its thermal imaging, but I don't think that's going to help us at all. But really, the sleigh has to circle the North Pole to, for about 12 hours to build up momentum uh, to, 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 because the sleigh's actually heavy. Uh, so we're all going to rest for about eight hours here, all of us together, uh, and hold, hold hands, uh, great elven hand-holding, which is one of the few things I missed about living at the North Pole. Balsamica, can I hold your hand? Yeah, I'm holding Ingomani's hand, but I can hold you with my other hand. Atlantica, could I hold your hand? Actually, I'm holding... I can't. I don't have an extra hand. Uh, Depiana, could I hold your other hand? You can, Claude. Thank you. So uh, we're going to close our eyes and get some rest. Uh, good night, everybody. Uh, I do want to thank everybody that reviewed the podcast recently. Uh, Pie Aficionado says, give it a try. 
I've tried a few different sh- sleep podcasts, but this one helps me sleep. It's pretty unique in that he's mostly rambling about nonsense and introduction is long and repetitive. If you're looking for a Zen podcast, this isn't it, but I would give it a try because it helps. It's like having a friend hang out with you till you get back to sleep. Uh, a sports human rights, but he doesn't get political. Uh, and he re- like puts re- resources in. Uh, then Jess loves movies. Says very calming. Been dealing with a lot li- li- lately, and uh, when I'm stressed, I listen to the podcast. Helps me turn off my brain so I can sleep. I love the theme song. Uh, sometimes I skip the Star Trek episodes because I pay too much connect to attention. It did take me two or three episodes to get used to the voice and relax. Uh, thank you for me for helping. Miss D said, uh, very helpful and comforting. Had trouble getting to sleep as an adult, but this podcast it gets and works like drugs, only better. Uh, don't ask. Eleven says voice. It sounds like my science teacher, uh, LOL, but that was a five-star review. Uh, Dennis just, uh, says, favorite part of my day, I have uh, brutal anxiety and uh, I need comfort when I go to sleep. Scooter's someone I can trust to listen to all night. I'm also comfort and look forward to listening. Uh, Camus, uh, 265, says, appreciate uh, the commitment to anti-racism, helpful podcast, seems like it cares. And uh, he's using his pop, pop, pop platform to per, 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 uh, and privilege uh, advocate for equity. Uh, Irish or flower child says, uh, thankful insomniac. I deal with CP, CPTSD and I found this podcast and now it's part of my routine. They're from Canada. Uh, Cass, Cass and Ket uh, says, uh, safe place all day, every day. I deal with racing thoughts, insomnia. After I heard about the show on Jen and Julie, and I checked it out. It's the best show, calming. A scooter helps me get sleep, gets through the day. Stan Chronicles are my favorite. Hi, Stan. Hi, Scoots. Uh, thank you. So that's every, that's all the reviews. Thanks, everybody, for taking the time to review the show. I really appreciate it. Uh, Sleep With Me grows as a podcast by people simply spreading the word, and we're able to bring this show twice a week because we'll be able to support the show on Patreon, support our sponsors. But like I said, a free way to support the show, just let people know about it or, or let them know about podcasts in general. When, you know, even if the conversation doesn't come up, you know, you don't have to bring up Sleep With Me on, on out of context, I guess, but... Uh, you can bring a podcast, put sneak podcast in it. Be like, "Oh, you going to the grocery store? Have you listened to uh, the, I don't know if it, like uh, the famous rich famous food podcast? I don't know. Do, like recommend podcasts. I guess that's all I'm saying. And show people how to use their app and stuff because that doesn't not that's not easy for everybody. I think they think that people don't realize they're free. Or that, it, you know, there's a lot of other things. So help them out and it helps everybody out. Thanks and good night. Hey, everybody, Scoots here tucking you in and letting you know uh, if you're listening and you're saying, you know, I want a more comfortable way to listen to Sleep With Me, but I also want the Sleep With Me logo on it. You could check out our Sleep Phones merch store at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash sleepphones. It's all Sleep Phones, the whole lineup uh, with the Sleep With Me, you know, Sleep With Me logo on there. Pretty cool. You could get there at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash sleepphones and then use our promo code Sleep With Me and you'll get an extra five dollars off uh how do you want me to you want me to tuck in there move it move those blankets okay how about that okay you got it good night